the discretionary powers are being used for the see it's a same person if he is from bjp probably the in the ugc they have given three category also he doesn't come under why is the governor in his discretion not taking that nobody has stated that he doesn't deserve but why can no actually deserve that we used to say no uh, rule and justice karunanidhi uh, has written so many uh, uh, books but he cannot be a primary school teacher uh, tamil nadu is a only state i think for doing some corruptions but all these vice yeah. chancellor who are facing charges they were all appointed by the previous governors finally the ugc sent a warning letter to the chief secretary that Hello and welcome to Chanakya's Face Off. Today we have with us educationist Dr. Gayatri Suresh with whom we are going to talk in detail about the various issues surrounding the Department of Education that is happening in the state of Tamil Nadu. Welcome to Chanakya English ma'am. Namaskar. Welcome. How are you ma'am? <coughs> yeah, I'm fine. So nice. It's been Very quite nice. Yeah. So the first topic that I would like to discuss with you is uh, is the issue about uh, higher education minister Mr. Ponmudi boycotting the convocation of Madurai Kamaraj University on the grounds of the governor rejecting the honorary doctorate to be awarded to uh, veteran communist leader and most importantly uh, freedom fighter Mr. Shankaraya. So your initial thoughts on this, and uh, do you do you think uh, the governor's decision? We cannot question though, but uh, do, do you agree with him on this? And uh, what do you think? Governor is a final stakeholders of all the decision taken uh, in any university in Tamil Nadu. All uh, all over India, the governors are the chancellors. They are having the rights to take final decision uh, how the university have to be run. Because based on the guidelines of the ugc uh, you have rightly mentioned that the honorary doctorate to uh, uh, shri uh, shankaraya uh, from communist party you, you rightly uh, introduced uh, though he is a freedom fighter we don't have any second thought about it but after how he is proceeding with the things also a matters for the ugc uh, as per the ugc guidelines there are three categories they have given uh how uh, the person one who is selected for uh, doctorate honorary doctorate uh, what they have import in the knowledge part creativity innovations continuously in a particular field so he is a freedom fighter uh, there is no doubt about it and he is joined in the party communist so when you are joining in a political party then it is the discretionary power of the ugc uh, guidelines Uh, to whom we have to decide uh, to give the honorary doctorate or not so according to me uh, i am having great regard with uh, shri shankaraya there is no second thought about it but according to the ugc guidelines whether he will fit into that or not that is a secondary one and yeah, i have seen many uh, uh, forums that there is a dispute even in the years number of years in the freedom fighting uh, years how many years he was in prison like that different uh, thoughts are going on so uh, at the last time uh, we are uh, moving and rushing a person to take a decision forcing a person it it could have been done in a proper way uh, we can give there is no second thought but it is the discretionary power we have to honor that based on the ugc guidelines the accusation is that the discretionary powers are being used for the benefit of bjp and are being targeted i mean used against <laughs> see it's a same person if he is from bjp probably the governor would have given is what no definitely definitely not they definitely not no, uh, no I'm, not, I'm, not, i'm not telling that it's the criticism from many people because since the uh, veteran uh, leader is from communist governor r n ravi is not interested in giving it to him is what uh, you know he is he is drawn that uh, attention and he has got that uh, feedback from many people in tamil nadu 
especially the ruling uh, no uh, i wonder that in the me press meet itself uh, my higher education minister saying that um, the power is with syndicate and senate in the syndicate and senate have approved that then why you have sent the file to chancellor so obviously the final decision maker is the governor apart from that also it is the education is apart from uh, any uh, political view we have to see everything because uh, anything should not be the wrong proceedings this is one thing we have to uh, remember you are convinced that the governor is seeing without uh, political uh, prejudice yeah i i have given you uh, in the ugc they have given three category uh, according to my knowledge also he doesn't come under any uh, three of the category you use the word discretion so the my question is uh, to give a honorary doctorate to a person like shankaraya what is the discretion why, why is the governor in his discretion not taking that uh, move towards giving it to him I, why we are having uh, because no one has stated that he doesn't deserve that that's one thing which which was so unusual like you know normally when there is a to and fro argument right people used to say no he doesn't deserve but so far in many other uh, interviews also nobody has stated that he doesn't deserve but why can't no you know, actually deserve uh, that we used to say no uh, rule and justice hmm. uh, both are different actually uh, we can say that uh, dharmic uh, in uh, spiritual if you say that uh dharmic is different rule is different uh, so rule may say one thing but according to the dharmic we may feel something so as a freedom fighter it, uh, we can have we can say that he is having a, a right to possess that degree but according to the rule i used to say funnily to my students that um karunanidhi uh, has written so many uh, uh, books even tolkapiyam uh, uh, everything uh, and all but he cannot be a primary school teacher as per the law am i right or wrong 200 he, he does no one will doubt or no one will say that he is a, he is not uh, having right to uh, tamil a right tamil scholar everyone will accept that he is an excellent tamil scholar but according to the rule he cannot become uh, even a primary school teacher this is the difference between i could see the sankaraya's case also if you are having different opinion with this i will also agree with that no so you are telling that the governor has followed the rules yeah of course okay well but this is not the only issue right so the the reason for boycotting the convocation is just not the governor's uh, you know governor refusing to give honorary doctorate to uh, mr shankaraya but uh, there are close to i mean the number is again a debate okay so dmk is telling 13 governor says 8 you know that you know it's still going on but uh, the latest update from raj bhavan and the rta uh, <coughs> references that we could see is that close to 7 or 8 um, the uh, eight uh, bills are pending with the governor for his signature and all are all are higher education related yes of course because uh, the, this government is always we, uh, wish to have a fight with the project like fight with the governor all the, we can take the uh, opponent party itself we need not uh, take the files number of files based on the raj bhavan even if it is have 13 as per the uh, dmk says in that out of 13 12 uh, bills are about uh, universities uh, chancellor power should be transferred from governor to uh, uh, governor. chief minister of uh, the state oh, how it will be legally accepted that is what the question this is not the first case even in many states it has been defended and finally in the court it was rejected that the chancellor is a uh, final uh, governor is a person one who can have authority to have <coughs> as a chancellor position so the 12 bills are different uh, universities bill uh, which scores the same uh, authority uh, should be shifted from one person to another person now uh, the higher education minister is in a predicament situation that uh, how to encounter that he doesn't know any way that's why they are uh, putting a uh, blame on the governor because uh, tamil nadu is the only state i think in the 22 years uh, an ex vice chancellor is arrested for doing some corruptions 
and many universities vice chancellor uh, are facing the police uh, cases and court cases against their corruption activities uh, so if it is in that case how a governor as a chancellor uh, will sign in that we have to think the one thing and another um, higher education minister is finding fault with the governor is uh, always uh, we used to talk oh, the yeah. chief ways sorry to break you in but all these vice yeah. chancellors who are facing charges they were all appointed by the previous governors not excellent the... question excellent question that is what the ugc has brought a guidelines that uh, usually there will be three people will be in the search committee uh, one will be the governor nominee one will be the university as well as the senate and syndicate selection per persons out of three obviously two persons will be based on the uh tamil nadu government any government state government as of now we can take this as a tamil nadu government the person can do any favoritism towards the tamil nadu government uh, and the only one person will be the governor nominee out of three and you know the majority will uh, win always that's why in many of the universities this cases is uh, like this the favoritism is happening ugc brought a guidelines that you have to include one ugc nominee in the search committee so out of three instead of three now they are adding one more person four so then the equal rights will be there one uh, central government you can take or the ugc and the governor ultimately governor will be the chancellor and he is representing the central government so it uh, the higher education is in the uh, concurrent list especially the higher education is in the uh, uh, central list so 2% from central 2% from state you can take then the decision will be uh, unanimous right so out of four the three uh, should give the uh, right information then only it will be taken as finalized one so this is what this is the way uh, the corruption or anything have to be solved over a period of time you uh, you have to correct it whatever the mistake or uh, you did it when we are finding it it is a mistake one we have the rule have to be changed in that the same way the ugc norms has been changed the guidelines have to be given they have given the guidelines uh, you you might have known that uh, the governor is receiving a, a letter from the search uh, tamil nadu government three members Uh, the governor is including one more person as per the ugc guidelines from the ugc nominee and he is uh, sending a, a press meet uh, giving a press meet and sending the letter to the uh, chief secretary uh, the chief secretary is rejecting that and they are giving a new go finally the ugc send a warning letter to the chief secretary that you have to include the ugc nominee if it is not as per the guidelines why the ugc has sent a warning letter to chief secretary whether anyone can dispute in that if the chancellor is going beyond the limit why ugc has sent a letter the way he has uh, released the letter and all it's a different debate but whether he is a doctrine of management whether he did it or not that we have to uh, answer it so so your point is that the previous vice chancellors were appointed with the influence of the uh, ruling state government and probably that might have caused uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, corruption or we don't know we are just uh, you know imagining yes. that must have you know that has, that must have led to a lot of favoritism and uh, that's why these vice chancellors there is a chance of favoritism because uh, out of three yes out of three two is giving one name uh, usually what the people will do no in search committee they will scrutinize all the uh, um, resumes whatever they have received in that they will select uh, three members the three members list have to be given to the governor and he will have interview with the three out of three he will select one so ultimately the power is with the Uh, person in the search committee those who are supporting the those two persons are supporting the three selecting the three persons out of three only the governor is selecting one uh, okay so whatever it is happening it is with the concurrent of the search committee the i i wish to uh, mention one point is here is the chancellor is not taking any independent decision that is what we have to uh, understand 
Okay. Okay. So that's one thing. Okay. But I have a different question. Uh, now that we have this uh, thought that prior vice chancellors uh, could have been, you know, the favorite pick of political parties and they have, they are facing corruption charges and everything. It could be an individual act as well. Now, tomorrow stating that, yeah. the, now tomorrow stating that even after including the UGC nominee and the governor is appointing a vice chancellor, if that person is going to be caught in any charges, we are not going to accuse the governor, right? Yeah, we are not going to accuse uh, now itself. I told the same thing out of three, he is selecting one. Uh, the, uh, the three search committee members instead of three committee members, we are going with the four committee members. In that, the majority will be three. So, we are trying to uh, solve the loopholes uh, always, everywhere. E uh, then, why we are uh, correcting the constitution even one not five times after. Uh, uh, the, um, it is written rightly by Ambedkar. So based on the situation, we are correcting the constitution in the same way, wherever we are finding the loopholes, we are trying to correct it and solve it one by one. Uh, in India, uh, we didn't have the IT Act before 2000, right? So once the um, uh, internet and the software is coming to <laughs> India, whenever the problem arises, after that only, we have uh, brought the... Uh, IT Act. Likewise, whenever the issues comes, we didn't have POCSO here before. Uh, we didn't have TADA, PODA and all here before. So based on the issues, we are creating uh, law one by one to uh, correct the mistakes and to find out and solve the issues and we are correcting the loopholes. So it may happen even in future, but it may uh, reduce the numbers and even we don't know that it may reduce and it can be a null one also. Okay. So every, whenever we are preparing a rule, we will think that it should give uh, corrective actions and it should give solution to any issues. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on uh, the happenings around Tamil Nadu, especially surrounding the education department. Being an educationist, it was so informative to hear you as always. Thank you so much. Ma. Namaskar. Thank you.